What drives conflict and tension in your story? If you can figure this out and put it in your writing, you'll produce scenes that are page turning and keep your readers engaged in reading and wondering what happens next. So what drives this conflict and tension in our stories? Well, what drives that in our own life? It's because we want something and someone or something is getting in the way. So what is that thing we want? What is that thing your characters want? It's the object of desire. And if you can figure out how to use objects of desire in your writing, it's going to be the secret to putting great tension and conflict in your story that'll keep readers engaged in turning those pages. My name is Tim Grawl. I'm the CEO of StoryGrid. I've been working with writers for 15 years. Everything in this training comes from my partner, Sean Coyne, the creator and founder of StoryGrid, and it's based on his 30 plus years of experience writing and editing. So in this video, we're going to look at objects of desire just at that scene level, right? So if we scale back and look at the full story, objects of desire become much more complicated and nuanced, and I'm gonna go over that in another video. But in this particular one, we're just gonna look at how objects of desire show up in a single scene. So here's the important thing. Every active character in your scene has to have something that they want, something they consciously want, and they're actively pursuing it throughout the scene. That is the object of desire. And the rule is that every single character has to have an object of desire that is different on one of three levels. Level one is that the characters want different things. So imagine there's an interrogator and an interrogatee. Okay, now I looked up that word that's actually a word and I'm gonna use it through this whole video, so don't leave me a comment about it. So the interrogator and the interrogate E, they want different things. The interrogator wants to solve the crime to make his city safer, and the interrogate E doesn't wanna to go to jail, so he doesn't wanna say what he knows. So the interrogator and the interrogate E want two different things. That's level one of object of desire. Level two is that the characters want the same thing but they want it for different reasons. So we're gonna take our scenario of the interrogator and the interrogatee, and we're gonna add a boss. We're gonna put him behind one of those one-way mirror things, and he's watching the interview, and he wants the interrogatee to say what he knows. So the interrogator and the boss want the same thing, but the interrogator wants it to make his city safer, and the boss wants it so that he can get a promotion. So they want the same thing. They want the interrogatee to say what he knows, but they want it for two different reasons. That's level two of objects of desire. Level three is that the characters want the same thing. They want it for the same reason, but they want to go about getting it in a different way. So I'm gonna add another person to our little scenario. I'm gonna add a second interrogator. So now interrogator one wants to play it by the book, wants to get the interrogatee to talk in the right way. Interrogator two, he wants to use physical torture to get the interrogatee to talk, okay? So now we have four people in our little scenario here. The interrogatee doesn't want to talk. The other three people do want him to talk, okay? So that's different. Then we have the interrogator number one and interrogator number two wanting the same thing for the same reason, but they want to go about it different ways. And then we have the boss that wants the same thing, but he wants it for a different reason. He wants it to get a promotion. Now, can you see how the tension starts building among these four characters because they're all going about getting different things for different reasons in different ways. So here's the rule. Every character in your scene has to have a different object of desire or have a different reason they want the object of desire or have a different way that they're going about getting the object of desire. If there's not a difference in there, this is what's causing problems in your scenes is you have characters that are just parallel and they're not conflicting and creating tension. That's what objects of desire do is they create conflict and tension. So if there is no difference in your objects of desire, your scene starts feeling flat, it starts feeling boring, it starts to meander, and it starts to feel like nothing's really happening in your scene and the reader kind of gets lost and gets bored. So when you're planning out your scene, you have to be really clear on what each of your characters consciously want and are actively pursuing and how they're going about getting that and making sure there's a difference. So when we're looking at the protagonist of your scene, obviously they have to have a conscious object of desire, something that they're trying to get, but they can be blocked from getting that by lots of different things. The environment, maybe they're physically injured, maybe they don't have enough resources. There's lots of ways to do that. 
But once you introduce another character, you've got to have some conflict between them. There has to be some sort of tension and conflict between them, and that goes on one of those three levels of objects of desire. Getting the objects of desire wrong is one of the top 10 mistakes we see writers make at that scene level. And I have a video that's walking through each of those 10 things down in the description. So make sure you check that out. Make sure you subscribe to this channel to get all of the videos. Hit that bell so you get notified whenever we put something new up. Also, we've got tons of great resources at storygrid.com that are free for you to dive in and get started. Make sure you sign up for the email newsletter. That's the best place to keep track of everything that we're doing at StoryGrid to help you become a better writer. As always, thanks for being a writer. Thanks for being a part of our community here at StoryGrid, and I'll see you next time.